Today, Clitorati, we celebrate Women's Equality Day. So in 1920, women were granted the right to vote. Fifty years later, the Equal Rights Amendment has been validly ratified and is now in effect as the 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. It only took 50 years. (laughs) So okay. Just so 50 fast. years, 50 <laughs> years for our country, the United States of America, to ratify an amendment that would invalidate many states and federal laws that discriminate against women. And just so you know, the central underlying principle is that sex should not determine the legal rights of men or women. So today we acknowledge and celebrate this huge win, and we've got a long way to go. Here at Clit Talk, our mission is one million people are living a pleasure-positive life. From 1948 to 2005, the clitoris, the organ, was not even listed in the Grey's Anatomy textbooks. And it wasn't until, shout out, Helen O'Connell, an Australian urologist who studied the clitoris starting in 1998, to get it put back in so our medical community can start to acknowledge its existence. We live in a puritanical, patriarchal world riddled with sexism and misogyny. It's just a fact. Just We're a fact. All in- <laughs> We're all impacted by that, no matter what our orientation, gender, or who we choose to love. That is the world we've been given. Well, Clit Talk provides a worldview from a pleasure-positive paradigm. So thank you to all of our Clitorati for being part of our pleasure revolution. Please share our show with your friends, your family, sign up for our newsletter, participate in our courses, reach for your pleasure like your life depends on it because it does. It does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really does. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So today it's just us three clits getting down and dirty, empowered women, empower everyone. And that's what Women's Equality Day is all about. Yeah, it totally is. So we were talking about this and one way to celebrate Women's Equality Day is to listen to women. Yes. And um, we do- Just fucking listen. Just fucking listen. (laughs) (laughs) And and we do that all year long and we're making it our full-time job because we're into it. Compassion containers is something that we created and it's something that we're teaching in our signature masterclass and the people who are in our course practice something they'll call active listening with their pleasure partners and inside of our sacred community. They give 30 minutes of their time to another woman in an act of sister goddess activism because whether we like to admit it or not, we are mere fact of being human. We are innately terrible listeners. I don't know about you, but I, my boyfriend says something to me or my mom will say something to me and I hear something completely different. It's just the little voice in our head is a terrible listener. So today we're going to remind you of Mama Gina's holy trinity. Shout out to Mama Gina. What up? We love you. <laughs> um, one of the, the tools that she has in her book, Pussy Reclamation, if you're, that's a fantastic book to read for women's equality, um, is the Holy Trinity, because that is how we start most of our actual clip talk meetings. So you're going to get a little inside scoop on how we actually operate as a culture inside and the culture that we're committed to creating not only for our business and for our listeners, you, um, but also the world. So I'm going to put you guys on the spot. Now. Would, you guys, would you like to show everyone how a holy trinity is done? <laughs> yeah. Well, we can talk about the components of it, right? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe we can even talk. I think we may have talked about this before, but um, so the, the three components of Mama Gina's holy trinity, Regina Tomashar, are a, a brag, a gratitude, and a desire. And, you know, we may have talked about this in a past episode, but I think it's actually, some people might be having a reaction. I remember the first time I ever tried to do a Holy Trinity, like we're about to do, I wouldn't do it. No, and, you were very mad that we, yeah, were all, and I, we all had to. And I think that talks a lot um, to the importance of Women's Equality Day, because for me, I had been so conditioned that bragging was not okay. It was not okay Mm -hmm. for me. I had to people please. I had to put other people first and bragging was not socially acceptable. It was not classy. It was not the thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so I got upset. I got really upset. And I think it just really speaks to the importance of this day and, um, the importance of like, as we're going through this exercise, if you're having a reaction, notice it, notice what comes up for you. 
and if we can start to, as a sacred container community, start to, um, you know, diffuse those, those blocks that come up for us, there is something really beautiful on the other side because now I can, I can settle into it. And what happens for me is when I actually like got into the world of bragging, I got more generous was the outcome for me. And I know Katie, you had a strong reaction as well. Do you want to share a little bit to that? Oh, it's very, very similar to you. I mean, I would, it's still uncomfortable for me to brag, I feel like, and oftentimes hard for me to think of anything. And I think that lives in the world of like uh, standing in my own accomplishment, like even remembering what I did, you know? Um, and, but I have very similar to you. My mom always told me that, no, you know, no one would be my friend if I, if I bragged about what I um, had accomplished, basically. So... It was never something that I would do. It was wrong. Yeah. It's Sin- but, and sinful. I think that we're, and I think we're told like, you know, I'm not going to speak for anyone else in the world, but I, for me, like I was told that subconsciously as a, as a little girl and a young woman, it's like, you don't brag. It's just not done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You're just looking for yeah, attention. Like, it's frowned mm-hmm. upon. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just like a frowned upon thing, like masturbating in an airplane. You just mm-hmm. don't do it. <laughs> And it, and it makes other people feel bad. Like that, that was the other thing. I was like when, when you plane, masturbate in a plane, it. it makes people feel bad, Katie? <laughs> no. I mean, Katie, well, maybe I, have a, people true story. Like, I have a confession. Like, I wish I was that free. You have a confession? I do have a confession. I'm not going to lie. I did masturbate in a public uh, arena. It was we, we were waiting for our train in Japan, and they have like Japanese toilets everywhere in public. And like I hadn't, I was on a family trip, so I hadn't masturbated in days. And the sensation of water from the from the Japanese toilet on my clit, and I you, just let it ride. And I you just let came. it. You masturbated with a public did you, bidet. Did you turn around backwards? Because it no. sprays your butt. <laughs> Yeah, Let's how did track, you? Did ladies. you? Were you? No, no, hell no. We're talking about. It. <laughs> did you? Did you? Did you? Did you straddle it, or are you just like? Yeah. Like, Look, like I what just was your slightly. Position? Pil- I I I was like I slightly tilted my pelvic. I slightly turned floor. my whole body around. No, nope. I stayed where I was, but I noticed that if I pushed my stomach out and kind of put my pelvic floor forward. Oh, okay, I see. Like if you were sitting over a bol- a bolster. And I was like, oh, wow, it's conveniently hitting my clitoris. <laughs> so, so, anyways. So, as you're <laughs> masturbating in this public Japanese yeah. b- bidet at a train station, yeah. my question is how long did it take you to come? It was like two minutes because I was on a family trip and I hadn't masturbated in days. So, I was like, prime. That's, imp- that's you impressive. Were ready that's to go. Legit impressive. I was ready. <laughs> yeah, it was an accident. So do the bidets an- there get you in the front and the back? Kind of. Um, They're really nice. They too. must. In Japan, everything is super clean. Yeah. I just, I don't know. They were like the most incredible toilets ever. I, 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 had, a, I had a romance affair on my <laughs> trip with a, <laughs> <Did> a bidet. <laughs> no, the bidet toilets romance. in Japan are amazing. I came home from Tokyo and I got, I got one for my, home, my house because I was like, I can't live. Yeah. Them. Like it's, I feel like it's so much more sanitary. I got back from Japan and still haven't bought one, and I need to get one because they're fucking amazing. Um, well, so your so birthday let's get back to, is coming you know, up. <laughs> that, was a, that was a pretty good brag, I gotta say. That, well, see, brag, that is an Madison. example of a brag. Yeah, and I did want to put in like the distinction of a brag. Like this is a little bit of like a reframe from like the bragging we know it. So the bragging that we know it, where we all were kind of where it was frowned upon. We're not talking about. Um, the, the structure of the Holy Trinity really allows spaciousness for the brag to exist in this really loving place. Because right after the brag is the gratitude. And right mm-hmm. after you state your gratitude, it puts you in this vibration of just like compassion and love. And then you state your desire. So, what are, you, area so what are you grateful for? If that's your brag, what are you grateful for? Um, See how I'm easy grateful. it is? See how easy it is when you practice, you can just launch into a brag? Mm -hmm. Right. I'm (laughs) great. Okay. Specific to that, I am grateful for my willingness to get weird because I know how much there's so much magic that exists on the other side of getting through the discomfort and shame to do something edgy like 
masturbate in a public, give myself permission to masturbate in this public restroom. To be curious enough it. to, to <laughs> tilt am, your pelvis forward a little bit more. Yeah. It's that curiosity, you know? <laughs> it, so, and, but, but related to Women's Equality Day, I am so grateful to have a support system of women in my life, the two of you as my partners, uh, and to, to have, be, be held in a compassionate, loving place every time we're in conversation, every time we're in meetings. Um, and my desire is for, this is the third component of the, of the Holy Trinity. My desire is for everyone to have access to uh, a compassionate support system so that they can have sister goddess activists. They can just have activists for them, their cha own champions mm -hmm. in their own life and know that everything's going to be okay. That we're totally taken care of in community. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Well bragged. Well bragged. Well, thank you ladies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Katie. Oh, God. Okay. Now, this is how you do it fast. <laughs> <laughs> Katie's, Katie's an efficient bragger now. Let's go. I, yeah, I do the agendas for most of our meetings. So, I'm like, we have 15 minutes to do all three of us. Oh, my God. Um, so, my brag is that I am getting my sex educator certification in addition to my nursing degree because I'm so inspired by the work we're doing here. Mm hmm. I'm grateful that I have a support system and a family that provides me the oper every opportunity that I've ever wanted to do. I just kind of get to follow my pussy. And my desire is to teach more people, not just women, all people, to be able to listen to their sex center, to start moving and making decisions from their life from there, because mm -hmm. it has completely transformed my life. And there's no way I'd ever be doing this show or, you know, you know using my nursing degree to become a certified sex educator if it wasn't for that. It actually came mm -hmm. out of doing <clears throat> our uh, signature masterclass um, myself, because we, when we run it, we do it too. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> We're participants. Yeah. That's awesome. Well bragged, Katie. Thank and you. congratulations. Thank That's you. Awesome. Um, okay. So this is Lindsay. My brag is since the beginning of this project, I've like tripled my income. Mm -hmm. And, um, that was something that I really struggled with, especially through the pandemic. All of my sources of income were dried up because I'm a singer, right? So it's like live performances, <laughs> like, like teaching in person, like every, all, basically all of my revenue streams. And I had to get really creative. Um, and so I guess my brag is that I was able to listen to my, my sex center, which is my pussy and, um, get really creative and, um, actually the signature master class was sort of born out of that creativity because it gave me an opportunity to look at what I really want in life. Um, so in a weird way, I'm really great. Like what I'm grateful for is that moment in time for a life pivot. Um, whereas in the past it could have really taken me down now with my pleasure education, I was able to make a life pivot in community in a sacred container that felt really, that really resonated with my soul. Um, and my desire, like, honestly is, um, for our podcast and, um, the courses that we're creating to have a quantum leap, um, this year so that we can, I'm so passionate about this conversation so that we can bring this to as many people as possible and, you know, have our, um, our desire of 1 million people standing at a pleasure, positive life actually realized and have that be a reality because, as we say a lot, I, I really believe that pleasure is access to peace on earth. I really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So well bragged. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So Clitorati, send us in your holy trinities. If this is something that you don't feel comfortable doing with someone in your life yet, mm -hmm. send it into us. We love to, we love to hear them. And I'm going to make a request, actually. I would love yeah. if people are sending it into our DMs or our email, if you're willing, send us a video. So mm. we can actually really be there with you. Like send us a DM of a video of you or email us, um, 
you know, and that would be that I would love to see videos so I could really connect to people. And I would love to hear as many Holy Trinities from our clitorati as possible. Mm -hmm. Let (laughs) us be your witness. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. So talking about pivots, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're going to pivot into, um, I would say another, uh, long-term desire for us. And I know we've talked about it on the show before, and it's the fact that our name is start out on iTunes. So our name is clit talk. Obviously if you're listening, you know that, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, in our name, the clit, like the C L I T, the I, the L and the I are both start out. First of all, that's a problem because that could easily be misconstrued as cunt, which I think has a different connotation than clit. Slightly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's really impacted our podcast because every time I search for us, it comes and up. We don't come start- up. It, no, it comes up with the starred name. And then when I click on that, nothing comes up. You have to actually yeah. type it out. And I'm like, how many people have tried to join this conversation and can't because our, because clit is c- like not a bad word, but iTunes isn't ready for that conversation. Yeah. Hmm. Clit is not a bad word. It's, it's, it was, it's a, it's a, it's part of the female anatomy and recognized in, it, it was recognized as uh, as, as, as part of that in a way where it should be part of the medical community, but then suddenly no. And then suddenly yes, in some, but not all textbooks. And it's, it, it's so interesting. You have to ask like, why, why, why is cock or dick talk not start out, but the word clit is. Well, I mean, um, to be, to be responsible, clit is slang for clitoris, but still, why is that like that? I'm not sure that there are shows called cock on <laughs> On iTunes, I'd have to double dick, check that. Dick, but dick. I know, I know, there dick is a dick for show. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think it's his name, mm-hmm. but still, yeah, you know. And it's it's it definitely, I think, has impacted people from joining the conversation, as you said, Lindsay, because it affects our search. It mm-hmm. literally affects the way you type it in. So for some and people, it, and who it aren't, kind of. Sorry, go ahead. For some people aren't as tech savvy that don't necessarily know like that, oh, let me try it this way or that way. You know, not everyone's super tech savvy. savvy. Some people are like more caretakers. They like fuck technology, you know? So I think it absolutely, um, there's, there's an impedance and I wish Mm -hmm. that there, I wish that our name was not start out. I I feel like it's another like subconscious download that sex is bad. Yeah. Like when you type it in, it's like, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I can't find it. So the show must not be there. Like it it automatically feels like you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I feel like those in living in a in a patriarchal world culture where sexism and misogyny is so is just part of our world. Mm -hmm. it, it, It it's immediately a trigger. And I feel it when I'm with people and they're like, oh, I'm typing it in, but I can't find it. And I'm like, right. oh, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Right. And I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. You just have to type out the whole thing. But like, you know, it's so ingrained in us that no yeah. one probably ever told you that sex was wrong. But does any, or do you talk about it? No. No, because yeah, you're not I've allowed had, to. Yeah. And I've right? had people say, oh, you know, I started listening. I, I was you know, I heard the name of your podcast and then I was really surprised when I started listening to it. Like it wasn't that crazy or something. And that's not, you know, they, they, they hear the name clip talk in there. I don't know what, I don't know what they're expecting. (laughs) I would love to actually hear initial responses. What do you think? (laughs) But, but it, and it's not bad that people have that reaction, but it is interesting. So like Mm -hmm. they hear the name, there's a judgment and then they listen to the podcast and they say, oh, it's not that bad. Like, what does that really mean? What do you mean not that bad? Like, it's What not, does that mean? Like, it, I don't know. Like, we're not like just naked and salacious. The I mean, sometimes time. we are. I mean, sometimes why we is are, any but... of that bad? Like, it's interesting that the, the word that comes out of people's mouth is ill bad. And again, I think it's that mm. subconscious programming that you're talking about. Even us, I catch myself in it. And we've done, mm-hmm. you know, we've done four years of pleasure education with each other and it still comes up for me. Oh, yeah. 
you know, sometimes when I'm like out in, in public and someone, someone's like, Oh cool. What's the name of your podcast? I'm so trained now to have to say it twice that I, um, I enunci- <laughs> I over enunciate it when yeah, I ask the I question now. So I'm like, it's clit talk. <laughs> like oh god like, what i know i, I always do the Everyone little goes, like what? someone's like what's the name of your podcast and i go in my mind i'm like here we go and i'm like it's called clit talk and they're clit cl- 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 talk yeah clit talk it's called clit yeah. talk yeah, a lot of people a lot of times people are automatically <laughs> like lit lit talk no oh yeah lit. oh yeah we're lit talk, talk. you guys you know, I do feel like this. sometimes I slur my words. I love the I people though it. who are like so sweet. They're like, "Oh, is it with one T or two T's?" Like that's my one of my favorite reactions because I'm like, "Oh, you like are you're cool. You're like you know you're gliding through this with me, and you're like, <laughs> I hear you. That's clit awesome. Talk or clit talk. I know that's hilarious. So what it's can really- we do to initiate some 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 change around um, norm? You know, normalizing the word clit as a community. I don't know. We could well, start a petition. Maybe we start a petition. I, I mean, how great, what a big breakthrough it would be if, if we actually got through to iTunes and they'd unstart our name. That would feel, I think I would cry. I would cry. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I'd be like, uh, uh, oh, you yeah, know, we, I was, I we have this. been afraid to talk about that because from the very beginning, it's been start out and it's bothered us. And we're like, mm-hmm. why? Why have we been tolerating it? I mean, maybe well, it's time. Because we're f- afraid that let's they'll start, take let's our do show a cha- off. Let's do a change.org petition. We could do that. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. All right. Let's do it. In Literally honor of Words Equality it. Day. All right. Oh, we'll add it to our to-do list and put it in the put it in the show notes. All right, so we're gonna put it, we're gonna we're, we're actually gonna do this. We're gonna launch a petition. Yep. We're okay. gonna have it in the show notes. Um, and this conversation actually ties into another conversation. We saw a, a a reel recently that had um, from another um, sex positive account, and it had a list of all of the new current ban hashtags on Instagram, oh, yeah. and still some of the ones that were still allowed. And it was shocking. Some of the words: um, pleasure, masturbation. Sex Sexual. education, sex education is all, they're all ban hashtags. How can Even, sex educate, like you, you get sex education in sixth grade. How can that be a ban hashtag? Even hashtag sexuality is banned. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. yeah. You can't even say sex in any of the things. Like people are putting like the number three for mm-hmm. the E so right. that just to be careful, but you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable because here we are, we've been interviewing doctors, experts, like people that are on the ground floor of making a real difference in the conversation around sexual education, pleasure education, informing us of things about sexual health that are now made available through social media and all these awesome people's Instagram accounts. And so mm-hmm. all these freaking sex educators, right, that have been using these hashtags, including us, can no longer use them, which means you can no longer grow your community on the social media channels. Mm-hmm. What the actual fuck? Yeah, and, I, and if you do, I you understand. Get shadow banned. Mm-hmm. Understand and I understand what? that, like, you know, I hear the argument parents have a concern. You know, I don't want my kids seeing sexual content on Instagram, which I understand. Um, but I'm not. Like, at what age is it really appropriate to have your kid on Instagram? Truth. Right. And also, even as a parent, like, if you go into, if you created an Instagram account for your child on their phone, if you go and pre-follow accounts for them and comment Mm -hmm. on, like, the the content you want them to be seeing, their algorithm will be stuck in that, not, like, randomly getting sex content, unless your kid's, like kind of, uh, you know, curious at an early age and starts like doing like hashtag porn on the apps. But dude, as soon as I knew what porn porn was, I was like 11 or 12. You bet your ass I was Googling for porn on the internet. (laughs) So I get that. I get that. I get maybe not allowing like the like streaming of, of, of like trending porn hashtags because kids are on the apps. Like, but come on, hashtag sex education. There's a fucking Netflix show called sex education. I wonder how they're doing. We should talk to them. 
And to be honest, <laughs> I think if parents aren't going to talk to their kids about sex, they have to. They're going to find out one way or another. So most of the sex positive platforms that I've seen that have been shadow banned or shut down, including ours, are actually really positive information that right, right. keeps them safe and um, has them enjoy their their pleasure and have them grow up in a world where pleasure isn't wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 agree. I, I think every parent should have the right to, you know, create the environment for their kid. And absolutely. I also think that sex educators deserve to have a platform, you know, just as like, I think that if there's, there's a, there's a missing connect here, right? Like why, why would, why would pleasure be banned? Right. Would that or sex education. Banned? Yeah. I yeah. Know. I mean, it's like, do you have the whole list, Madison? You had the whole list at one point, right? Oh, I have to live just to, I run our social media, our Instagram. I have to <laughs> literally, anytime I use a hashtag now, I just like run it through this generator and it tells me if it's banned or not, because I'm like, I'm not fucking around, you know, is Valentine's day banned shit, you know, and I it don't was wanna, like, this year. <laughs> it was, it was? Yes. Uh, so yeah. Weird. So actually, that's what I would recommend. I would just say like, you know, for anyone, especially if you've been listening to our show for a while, maybe you're starting to post more sex positive content just to like have your back. You, be Check out like these banned hashtags. You, you cannot use hashtag sexuality, as we mentioned, hashtag masturbation, hashtag sex education. You will be shadow banned, which means when people search you, your name just won't pop up unless they write out your entire handle and know how to spell it. So that's a big no, no. <laughs> But there, the the more shocking thing is some of the things that are not ban guns, right. like AK forty seven weapons. Those are not banned kill. hashtags. Yeah, like how ridiculous is that? And I don't how, know how many school shootings do we still have? You know, like this is just ridiculous that these hashtags would be fine online. Um, not yeah. You have to. We have to ask. Like, what is this? I kind of feel like. I got inspired from something you said to me, Lindsay, and I kind of feel like this is the, 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 the digital witch hunt. Like this is like, <laughs> uh-huh. they're trying to burn us at the stake. But yeah. yeah. Like, shadow banning is the new <laughs> <laughs> being burned at I the stake. Know. I know. So, and that's exactly why we, we are having this conversation and why it's, I think it's more needed than anything. You know, the pendulum swings one way and we got to be there to, supports what we believe in no matter what yeah um and and um part of you know something that we really feel strongly about is um one thing that we want to do to give back to the community is actually next year we're going to be launching a scholarship program because um you know our courses are not free <laughs> we're, we're trying to make an honest living some here. of them some of them are <laughs> so a lot we do have a lot of free opportunities but we are you know something that we have internally really um, discussed and feel strongly about is for our, our, um, our flagship course, which is our signature, um, our sex and empowerment signature masterclass, um, that we want to launch a scholarship program next year so that, that this is truly available to anybody. So we want you to start racking your brain. If you think you would like to nominate yourself, or if there's somebody in your community I think the first step is to just start sharing the podcast with them so they can be in our stratosphere. They can start participating in our free courses and we don't want any conversations to stand in the way of anyone having this education. So if there's people in your life that you want to start sharing this conversation with now is the time, you know, share the podcast with them. Um, you know, start them from the beginning. We hear so many people just binge from season one. <laughs> it's so awesome. many people do that. We told people a lot to do that in the beginning of our show. Like, well, so why I just listen from the beginning? Because it really is the beginning of all of our stories. And we started with nine women, nine very different women. And mm-hmm. it was like a talk show for the yeah. first like two seasons. So it was very cool. It was yeah. really fun. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, and then, you know, another thing. Another um, tool that we like to really play with here, and I think we may have done it live on the air before, yeah. um, but it's acknowledgement. Katie, do you want to kind of create what acknowledgement is for everyone? And then we can well, demonstrate. Well, the thing that I love about um, the acknowledgement exercise that we do is that you can actually ask to be acknowledged for what you want to be acknowledged for. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to wait for someone to compliment you or anything. You can actually be like... I really want to be acknowledged for, you know, 
Mm-hmm. And that's one of the Showing reasons why today. We, yeah, it's one of the reasons why we wanted to bring it up today because, you know, on Women's Equality Day, we want to empower specifically because it's Women's Equality Day, anyone who identifies as a woman to empower you to see what it looks like to actually ask for what you want to be acknowledged for. So do you guys want to demonstrate? Yeah. And the other, th- the other thing I want to say is that you can open this conversation with like your partner or your friend and asking them, is there anything you'd like to be acknowledged for? And then you can be like, I want to be acknowledged for this. And then you basically, you know, it, you know. Yeah. You definitely want, don't want to like word? march up to them if you're like resentful of them because you haven't been acknowledged and be like, no, Jordan, I want to be acknowledged for blah, blah, blah. This is like a space you want to create to just warm them up to say like, Hey, let's acknowledge each other for something that, you know, that, what would you like to be acknowledged for? And then I'll share after what I'd like to be acknowledged for. What do you want to be acknowledged for, Madison? Oh, I love this moment. Uh, I would like to be acknowledged for... How loving I am and... And, um, it's my willingness just like to learn new things, to do things the best, to like go constantly grow and be like becoming the rising Phoenix, like every week, as if it was like 50 first dates, just like constantly rising into that power. Um, yeah. Anything else? That's good for now. Okay. Uh, you know what? So, Actually, for just, you know, for coming out. <laughs> see? This is, this is, this is, this is, <laughs> Once you start, you could like look and be like, oh, I want to be acknowledged for this, this, and this. I want to be acknowledged for um, just really standing up for um, the LGBT community and becoming more active in it. All right. Hmm. So, Madison, if I'm ever feeling down, I call you because you are always such a space of true love and acceptance and vulnerability and I can be my ugliest self and call you and you're just like this fluffy cloud of like (laughs) purple and rainbow love and you just really see me every single time and I know you do that for every single person in your life so thank you for being that ray of sunshine every single time I I get to talk to you and and I and I want to add in an acknowledgement because our social media has been so popping like you have really put you've learned so much in the realm of of not just social media, but in marketing our show and really stepping into your power as a, as a leader in, in that realm. And I just acknowledge you for all of the work that you're doing, not only in clit talk, but in your own businesses, I see your own personal social media pop in. Like you are really stepping in and expanding your wings and growing your own brand and help and like helping clit talk to rise. And, and part of that is you like owning your true authentic self as a bisexual woman in a non-monogamous, um, marriage. And sometimes you maybe want to be monogamous and you're just have this freedom to be, to be fluid and, um, and it's really inspiring and it's so permission giving. And it just reminds me, um, constantly to give myself that same permission. So I love you. Oh, I love you so much. Did I miss anything? No, I feel thoroughly acknowledged. I feel like (laughs) that was the closest we'll get to sex ever. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, so Clitorati, now you see what is possible. We have shared with you a couple of our favorite tools that we wanted to share with you for um, Women's Equality Day, the Holy Trinity, also acknowledgement. And I'm going to do something on the fly. So okay. we, we right. do have a lot of like free opportunities this year where you can have access to community like this. If, if this sort of conversation sparks something inside of you, I'm also going to put us on the spot. If you are listening right now and you want to be acknowledged for something, send us a DM and we will send you a video back acknowledging you. If you, if there's someone in your life that you, if you like, I don't know who to ask for, ask us, we are here. We will acknowledge you. Send us a DM with what you want to be acknowledged you for. And we're going to send you back a video, kind of like a cameo and acknowledge you because every 
woman deserves to be acknowledged on Women's Equality Day. So if you want to be acknowledged today, hit us up and we will do that for you. So um, real right. quick, just to wrap things up, for all of you, no matter what your gender, we're going to have this linked in the show notes. There is a petition um, for Women's Equality Day to be a federal recognized, a federally recognized holiday. So women are still making less than their male counterparts. And for women of color, the gap is even greater. Also, women have lesser numbers and significant forms of leadership. This initiative will bring us a step closer towards balancing the scale and commemorating efforts that support inclusiveness and equality. So we're going to have the link to sign that petition in our show notes today, sign it, share it with your friends. It's, it's a simple thing you can do. I know when we were preparing for this episode, Katie and Madison, you guys had a couple of other really fantastic ways to celebrate women's equality day. You guys want to share a few of those as well to wrap things up? Yeah, I mean, we really, we really hit them. We we started our scholarship program. We're starting a scholarship program for Clit Talk. So, introducing a mentoring program, despite all the efforts that women make, you know, like we just said, more men, men hold top level positions. So we gotta we gotta lift each other up. Um, you can organize organize a collection drive to give back to the community or do some charity or aid in a cause. But we really hit it on the nail today. Listen to women. Mm -hmm. Shout out powerful women in your life or women who inspire you out there in the world. Um, and then read Pussy a Reclamation. Update your bookshelf. Yep. You know, it's start our Bible. So, yep. Yeah. And get out there, maybe with your best girlfriend today. The two of you do a Holy Trinity. Acknowledge a woman who is least expecting it today and make mm -hmm. her Women's Equality Day. Um, thank you for listening to this episode. Um, we hope that the tools we offered made a difference for you and that you are left with um, your contribution to Women's Equality Day because with, no matter what your gender, you're listening to this right now and that is a contribution in this conversation. We're going to have links in the show notes to both the the petition to make Women's Equality Day a uh, federal holiday, as well as our petition to get Clit Talk unstarred. I'm so excited for that journey with everybody. So I hope we're gonna works. we're gonna have that petition too, and I'm excited. I'm like I can see it clearly the day where it's unstarred out, and we're gonna have that quantum leap we've been looking for. So, mm. um, I love you, ladies, so much. Thank you for you. everyone who's listening to this. We love you, Clitorati. Um, you are the wind beneath our wings. That's <laughs> true. All right. It and with true. that, Clitorati, we're going to see y'all next Tuesday. We'll be back. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.